This video is going to contain spoilers from the off, so I'm warning you now. Well, the Shogun finale has just been released following the explosive penultimate episode last week. Like all good shows, the penultimate one tends to be the one which contains the bulk of the action, and the finale usually serves its purpose in bringing it back down to earth and building on everything that we saw. And Shogun did this perfectly. The ending was ambiguous, but it also provided clarity and closure whilst also leaving it open. There was no battle of Sekigahara like many of us predicted, and it definitely took a leaf out of the 80s miniseries and novel, almost treating it like a footnote. This is because the show isn't about the battle of Sekigahara, it's about everything else that surrounded it. Like Tanaga said, he sent a woman to do something an army couldn't, a line which held such value. So let's not wait any longer, and let's jump right into the episode. Here is Shogun Episode 10 Ending Explained. John's old age and his fate were embedded throughout the start of the episode and in specific moments. There was a focus on Blackthorn in his older years, something which we didn't truly know if it was real or not. But it shifted us into the future where he was an old man and seemed to be living back in England. But due to the ornaments displayed around his room, it showed that he looked back on his time in Japan. There was a helmet which had Tanaga's banner on it and his sword, where it was mentioned that he fought off an entire army with it. This could show that he did eventually make it out of the shores and back to England after serving Toranaga. One thing that makes me think that this could be real is the fact that when the scene opened and closed, there was a clock ticking in the background, almost symbolizing the progression of time. However, the thing that makes me think that it could be a dream is the fact that he was holding on to Maro's cross, something which he threw in the water when Fujisama scattered her husband and child's ashes. Plus, this also occurred when John was in a passed-out state following the explosion that happened when Mara was killed. I feel this scene almost served as John's dream, something which also links to the title. John dreamed of leaving Japan and making it back home and being able to live out his days in England. When he was asked, was it given to you by a savage? It almost showed the difference in mindset that he had. Later on in the episode, when he was passed out again, that question came back into his mind, and then it cut to Morrow on several different occasions. The series battled with John's sense of belonging and getting to a point where he didn't fit in with the European culture that he was used to, but also not quite fitting in in the culture and land that he found himself in whilst in Japan. With Savage being something that he described the people as before he'd even stepped foot in Japan, he thought far differently by the time he woke up. I don't think we'll ever truly know if this scene was a dream or if it was reality, but I'm leaning more towards it being a dream. In real life, the real John Blackthorne, William Adams, never actually left Japan and stayed there until he died. He even had children there too. So if the show is wanting to stay true to the history, which it has tried to do on many different occasions throughout its run, I feel this would be acting as a dream. John's heartbreak and sense of mourning for Morrow were present throughout the entirety of this episode. He had Mariko's cross, which she was given 14 years ago by Father Martin Alvito, and when it was given to her, Alvito said, for when there are no words. And with Blackthorn holding on to this cross with everything that he had within him throughout most of the episode, even holding on to it when he was going to commit seppuku, it showed that he was riddled with grief, and he genuinely had no words that he could say that would make anything better. There was a moment which was actually quite heartbreaking to watch, which was when he was sitting with Fuji Sumer, and there was an empty space that was next to them, which is where Maro usually sat. The absence was felt, and you could tell that he felt it too. Even when he got on the boat to go back to Iroh, when he burst into tears thinking about her, it was such a powerful moment. The score in the background supported that scene so well too. The fact that Maro asked the church to spare John's life following her death and arranged for him to not be ambushed, it showed the care that she had for him. And he appreciated the fact that he was a thought in her mind in what would have been her final moments. With John saying that he was praying to a god, not the Protestant god or a Catholic god, just a god, it showed that in that moment, he put the war that he had within him before he landed on the shores of Japan on the back burner, showing that he didn't care. Even when he saw Toranaga, he said to him that he didn't need the war and that it was considered a small war, showing that Japan had changed him, Mariko had changed him, and he wasn't the same man that he was when he first arrived there. It was only at the end of the episode where we saw that he was able to let go of Maro as he dropped her cross in the sea when Fujiyama scattered the ashes of her family out there with her, saying, 
Let your hands be the last to hold hers. It was something which I thought was a nice touch. John said how a soul committed to the sea is one that lives on forever. So him bringing in his beliefs in this instance, and there being a connection of two different cultures, it was something which I thought was nice. Blackthorn also had some moments within this episode where things were different. For example, when he met with Omi, it was completely different to the previous occasions. Both of them were respectful to one another, and when Omi asked for John's swords and gun, he handed them over with ease. This was so different compared to the hostility that was present in the early episodes. Plus, Tobe Punero also helped Blackthorn get his ship out of the water in the final part of the episode. That's something that I don't think anybody would have seen coming, but the fact that it did, it showed that Blackthorn had a place in Japan. He was no longer the barbarian that people viewed him as when he arrived. The people were no longer savages like he thought they were. There was respect between the both of them now, and he found where he felt like he wanted and needed to be. Yabu's fight, Yushur, had such a complex yet simple arc over the course of the show. He was a man that did everything that he could in order to survive and to not need to face death, but by the end of the show, death was the only thing that was facing him. It was revealed by Toronaga's spy. Thanks for watching.